There are a few useful stitches to master when making lampshades. Streaky stitch, more commonly known as lampshade stitch, is by far the most important to know when making handmade lampshades. To secure your first stitch, feed the needle through the fabric, coming out the front of your work. Stitch into the fabric with a couple of back stitches, working from bottom to top, and loop through to secure. It's important to work away from the centre of the shade to secure the tension you have created in your pleats, gathers or tailoring. Each individual lampshade stitch is created in two parts. First, take a zigzag running stitch down and across going up into the fabric from bottom to top, making a small back stitch. It's important to catch all the fabric and or Indian cotton tape layers with your back stitch. Secondly, repeat the back stitch snugly from bottom to top, catching all layers to secure and lock. Continue working with a running zigzag and double securing back stitch, working around the frame. If you're right-handed, you'll probably find it easiest to work from left to right around the frame. The best direction for left-handed sewers will depend on whether you are ambidextrous or not when stitching. Lampshade stitch is essentially a locking stitch designed to secure fabric onto the lampshade frame. It's the combination of a zigzag running stitch and a back stitch. The zigzag moves across your work and the back stitch locks and secures so that no tension is lost. It's essential that when stitching you catch the fabric and or binding below as floating stitches will not secure your fabric to the frame. Ideally it's best to use a strong thread as close in colour to your fabric as possible. However, unless the stitches are designed to be a feature, in most cases, the stitches will be covered with a bias or trim. For this demonstration, I'm stitching the lining to the bottom ring. I'm securing the lining over the face fabric. My stitches will be covered in a bias trim, however, I'm still using matching thread and will keep my stitches consistently neat and at the same height. I continue working across the ring with first a diagonal zigzag running stitch and then a locking back stitch. In this demonstration, I am avoiding stitching into the top of the ring because even though my thread is the same colour as my lining, I do not want my stitches to be seen. My stitches are placed to the front of the frame. The trim will be sitting directly on top. To finish, add an extra back stitch and loop through to secure. Then lastly, tidy your thread under your work before cutting. So whether you are planning on making a pleated lampshade, such as this elegant Wedgwood silk with a beaded trim, or a traditional tailored lampshade, such as this classic William Morris, timeless, or perhaps a little chic gathered lampshade in pretty Liberty Tanner Lawn. Whatever you decide to do, you are now ready to secure your fabric to the frame using lampshade, or should I say, streakly stitch. You'll find more information about the specifics of using lampshade stitch, depending on the different lampshade design requirements, in my blogs, on my website, and of course, at my workshops.